Hi everyone, hope you're well. Um, today, because I was so fed up with the look of the um, Makume Gane pendant I did the other day, that I had to varnish it because the female was just horrendous. Um, I've decided I'm going to do another Makume Gane but I'm just going to use some um, better clay or fresher clay. I'll be nice and say fresher clay. Um, and just have a play around with the pattern. Um, yeah, I was really disappointed with it. In fact, I'll just get it down. I really loved the pattern, but the female was just such hard work. It... Um, took ages to condition and then the surface was quite bumpy even though I tried to be careful um, about air and things so um, unless I've got some uber fresh female which I, to be fair I haven't got much left of female um, I think I'm just not gonna use it guys unless I'm really stuck um, I think I'll just stick to Primo and Cernet um, <clears throat> and a few of you mentioned in the comments that you'd also had issues um, with it um, and I'm just finding it such hard work at the minute um, and I don't want to battle with my clay for an hour before I um, start to create something it kind of takes the joy out of it doesn't it so anyway I've had a morn <laughs> and I'll, um, I'll crack on and tell you what colours I'm using so I've got me some Primo White. I'll just show you the labels, guys, because I know you like to see um, the colours I'm using, although I can't seem to find where the colours are written on this one. I may have cut that bit off. Uh, this is just white uh, Primo. Um, this is just black. Primo, I've just wrapped it up tight, then it doesn't um, dry out or anything. I'm quite careful with my clays when I put them away. And I've got some whatever colour this is. Uh, can you see? Burnt Umber. And I've got some turquoise. And I've got a bit of. Oh, this labels a bit. I've just got a scrap of this left, so I'm just going to use it up antique gold. Um, what I'm going to do first before I do anything is I don't want to use this brown too dark, so I'm going to mix it with some white um, just to lighten it a little because it's quite a rich colour and it's got quite a red tone to it. Um, so I'll probably, um, I'm not going to use too much of it and I don't want to mix too much of it. So I'll just mix this slice. With just a little bit of brown. Just to make um, like a tan colour. Because I think browns and blues work really well together. Um, and I just thought it'd be interesting to be fair so um, yeah and I'm not making a huge block guys so I'll just condition maybe this much of it each piece um, to use um, so I'll go and get some uh, of this conditioned and I'll get this mixed and then we'll uh, build the block so I'll see you in a sec hi guys all conditioned I've done these on a three on my past machine so I've got my black, my turquoise, my antique gold, some white. I have conditioned a bit more black. I've left that on zero just for my backing. And that's the tan colour that I got from mixing the burnt umber and uh, white. And I put a tiny grain uh, of black in just to help the tone because uh, it is a, a little bit red that burnt umber and we'll just cut some squares and start layering up 
just need to decide which order I want to do it in. Um, I'll just cut some while I'm thinking. Uh, I'll probably just, I'm going to do uh, three black, uh, probably just two of each out of everything else. I think that might be enough. Um, we'll see, because I don't want to make a massive block. And I'm going to use a little bit of gold as um, a plug uh, into one of the things that I cut out. So what I'm going to do is just get this black uh, scrap and I'll just make a little square up with some of these scraps because the bottom bit always kind of gets wasted, doesn't it? I can't think of the word for it, but you know what I mean. It kind of gets eaten up while you're making the block. Um, so I'll just use these scraps to make a little bit for the bottom. Um, yeah, and that's about right, so it'll do. I'll just give it a little roll to get rid of that lump. Then that'll be my base. So let's think. I think I'll, in fact, I will cut another one and I'll put this beige one on the bottom as uh, like a buffer. A buffer, that's the word I was looking for. A buffer layer. Uh, so I think I'll do turquoise then gold then white then tan and then black so what did I do oh turquoise gold white oh tan and black there we go and that just pick these scraps up Oh, it's so nice working with this after battling with that horrid femur. Um, I just need to leave a bit of gold out because we're going to use a bit of that. Um, and maybe a bit of black. We'll see. Right. No, I'm not going to... Um, thin my layers out too much with this I'm just going to give it a roll and a turn and I'll just do the bottom then it doesn't go too funny on me In, sorry just roll it a little bit thinner I'm thinking if I get a rectangle it might be easier to slice and stack then see a few bubbles let's just give them a nick this in half and stack and I'll just show you sorry it was a bit far away again so my layers are not uber thin 
just nice nice enough that we're not losing the um you know we're not using losing the colors if that makes sense i'll just get this into a bit of a block get rid of these little bubbles So there's my block now then I think I'll keep this one pretty simple I am going to remove um, one hole from it and roll a bit of gold up in it uh, but I just want to keep this one quite subtle so I think I'm just gonna I'm just using my ruler because it's quite a nice flat edge on it it's actually still got a bit of clay on that edge Let's get that wiped off uh, and I'm just going to do, I think I'll do three stripes down that side like so and let's find a circle. I think I'll cut a few circles into it as well. Um, yeah just going to do this with my cutter make like a ring of circles I think that's enough there I, think I might put a, a plug in this section if I can find my circle there we go I'll just get my chunky circles out I don't want a massive one I think that one will suffice so I'll cut a circle in here like so I'll get that pushed out before I forget about it when I come to use it for something else uh, and I'm going to plug this with some gold so I'm just going to take some of that scrap gold and I'm just going to roll it make sure that there's no uh, air trapped in it I just trim that off I like putting these little plugs in it just adds that little bit of colour doesn't it I'm just rolling and squeezing this guys then I know there's no um, I've rolled that a bit thin then I know there's no uh, trapped in it how's that there we go has that gone to the bottom yes it has and I'll just trim this off roughly for now and I can just make sure it's in there there we go and I think I might just, just do some dots um, I'll just follow the curve of this and then I'll just do that and then I might just do a few random ones I like doing things in threes there we go that's all I'm going to do guys I think that's enough for that let's get this back together where's me squares I'll just get my squares out guys then it's a bit easier for me to do get this back together
give it a squitch. Give it a roll. And I'll just flip it. Give that bottom a bit of roll. See there where the gold's come through with that little plug I made. There we go. Right, guys, I'm going to let this sit a minute. Because it's, again, it's very warm in here. I've had the heater on. And, of course, my oven's on. So I'm just uh, going to let it cool down a little bit before I do anything else. And then we'll come back and take some slices again. I'm not um, going to take little slithers. I just like cutting a, a decent slice off. Um, so I'll just pop this on a little bit of paper. And um, just let it uh, cool down a little bit. And once that's cooled down, I'll have a little clean up. Uh, we'll come back and make some jewellery. See you in a min. Hi guys. Right, this has cooled down quite well now. I'll just put it on the windowsill. Um, right, so, as usual, there's my block. You know I'm not very good at taking thin slithers. And I don't quite like the look with some Mikumagane thin slithers. Uh, so I just do it this way so I'm just going to take a slice through this block and there's our first piece it's quite funky looking quite like the colours it's done I wasn't 100% sure about the tan, uh, but I think it works quite well. I'm just going to turn this around because I've noticed I'm distorting. Not that it matters. Uh, I'm just distorting it a little bit. Uh, I might wet my blade with a baby wipe because it's quite grippy, this um, Primo, because it's, it's very fresh. I maybe should have leached it a little bit first. Uh, I'll just take another slice. I've got two different looks. This one looks pretty cool here. You can see the little dots running through it. Again, I'll turn it just again and take another slice. I'll just wet my blade a little bit. quite thick but I'll put it to one side now I don't normally pass it through my um, pasta machine but the way it's been squished I think it would stand um, a little spin through so um, I'll just pass these through my pasta machine reduce oh I've done it again haven't I keep forgetting where I am don't I um, I'll just pass it through to get it uh, an even thickness and you know see what it does and then we'll uh, we'll come and make something with it and we'll be a sec okay I pass these through reduced them down to a two so I started off at zero then reduced them down to a two uh, that one's particularly funky I really like this one uh, again um, my clay friend Deborah uh, does a fabulous I don't think she's done a tutorial on it I may have to ask her to do one she does um, like a butterfly wing makumegane uh, and it looks amazing and this is quite similar again um, so uh, I might have to get some tips off her and see if I can uh, recreate it too uh, this one's gone a bit thin on this side 
so this uh, might be a good bit oh you can't see sorry guys I keep forgetting that I've repositioned my camera so I'm still working over there uh, this one went a little bit thin when I was cutting it um, so I might use that um, just to make a couple of beads um, but I'll pop that to one side but I think out of these I'll make a nice pendant with this one um, first so of course as usual uh, I'm going to burnish it uh, make sure there's no marks on the surface uh, and that all my little pokes and holes are um, filled in And to be fair, it could stand a bit of leach in this clay, so let's have a look. I can still see a little mark there. I'll just do a bit more. A look there we go that's perfect but I will just give it another where well, I've just rubbed my finger over it I will just go over that bit again so yeah I'm really happy with that piece um, now I've got some backing clay here and I'm not sure if you'll pick or oh, you can there um, I have this uh, texture mat I can't actually remember where I got it from guys sorry but it's just a silicone texture mat and it's quite a fine texture um, it's just like lines uh, so I've I've already lined the back um, so that I've got a decent back so I'll just pick this piece up And I'll just give my desk a little wipe. Oh, come on. Uh, just to make sure that there's no crumbs anywhere to spoil me back in. Oh, and I need oh, I need a bit of kitchen roll now. Because I've over dried uh over wet it. <laughs> there we go. So I'll bring my back in. in turn that over onto my desk and I'll try and pop this on so it's in a good position I'm just going to turn this around guys it might be better this way there perfect let's give it a little burnish to make sure it's bonded Now then, I was hoping to get two nice pendants out of this, so this one might now be a bit too big. I wanted to use this one, I haven't used it properly yet. Um, so maybe I could do that there and let's find another one. Maybe use this one here. that's kind of funky let's see if I can move them around a little and make the most of the pattern and the colors because that would look pretty cool just there bringing that spot in well, I could maybe use this long one along here and squeeze this one in once I've cut so I think that's what I'll do guys I'll just move this one up a little bit um, and I might be able to get three pendants out uh, you know me being Ms Frugal and everything I will remember to use a little bit of uh, cling wrap if I 
can just get some off. Oh, there we go. I'll use this bit of cling wrap. Get that tail out. Right, so I'll pop this one up right up there against the edge to make the most of that piece. And I will use my block if I can find it. I'll have to use this other one. Excuse the state of this, guys. It's a really old stamping block that I mix paints on. I'll just give it a little wiggle. So that's one pendant. I'd really like to get that one in there. I think it might just do it, but let's see. I'll just find a clean spot on this. Will that give me enough? Oh, it should just do it. So I'll use this long thin pendant along this edge. And again, I'll just use my block to make sure that I've got all the way through on that one. That's going to look pretty cool, that one. I can see already. And I've just got enough room with a bit of manoeuvring. Maybe just there to cut this one. Oh, there we go. Three pendants. Let's get this backing out the way bring in a scrap of paper I'll get this one up first there seems to be a bit of a blob there I don't know why I think maybe the other cutter caught it let's just get this off my blade this clay is a bit sticky guys right I'm just going to nip this edge because it's there we go it was just a little bit rough right clean my crumbs that looking let's check them edges there so that's one let's get this one up edges cleaned up a little bit no crumbs or no major crumbs should I say pop that one down and then last but not least let's check my edges there is a, quite a few crumbs on this one see a little bubble in the surface on this just there I shall grab a pin there so that's our three pendants guys let me find a pin and see if I can pop that oh 
that one's not very good, it isn't sharp. Let's get this one. Just a tiny little bobble there. Got it. And I'll just give it a little... should do it. So there we go. Three lovely pendants. So I'll pop these in the oven. Uh, I'm actually wondering whether to put a little curve on them. No, nope, I think I'll leave them as they are. So got three nice pendants there ready for the oven um, now then what shall I do with this beauty could do a nice square I suppose um, not sure I think what I'll do guys is I'll not rush and do something with it um, if I make a couple more pendants I'll just um, post some photos um, and then you can see uh, what I did with them because um, I'll probably just do a nice square or a circle with that one and I may make a couple of um, beads in fact I should make a bead really to I like this one yes I like this one with a hole in and a bead on the top I just like how it looks so let's put a hole in before it's baked find my medium one come out I shall put a hole in this now and make a little bead with it make another little bead to go with it I just like how it looks there got a nice clean hole I'll clean that out in a second. Let's make a little bead from this bit of scrap. Um, what sort of bead? I don't know. Maybe just a nice round one. And I'll just try and get a bit of all the colours in. Uh, showing that's going to be a bit too chunky for that I think let's cut some off I'll just get that seam to close so that there's not a great deal of black showing and I'll just make a little round bead little bead to go with that I don't mind it having a little bit of a flat bottom so I'm just going to make it have a flat bottom make sure it's nice and round we'll bake that there we go lovely 
I do think a bit of turquoise would be nice. Hmm. I can never make my mind up when I'm making beads what I want in them. I'll maybe make another little one. With this. Because I quite like that bit of turquoise there. Let's just round it off. Uh, I'm not too pedantic with beads, you've probably noticed. I don't mind if they look a bit organic and a little bit um, not quite round. Uh, and as much, I love lentil beads, but they're probably as uh, neat a bead as I'd use. Quite like making square beads as well. There, I'm going to bake this one as well. Just a little flat rounded bead, and see. Excuse me. See which one I like the best. So we've got a couple of beads and a couple of pendants. Uh, I'm probably going to take these out after. Oh, take these out after uh, 15 minutes, guys put a bale on the back um, although I think that would look nice with a pinch bale so maybe I'll just put a bale on this one uh, we'll see yeah probably will just put a little bale on the back of this um, but anyway I'll pop these in the oven will get them baked off and I can decide what I'm doing off camera rather than taking up your time babbling. <laughs> right guys, I'll stick these in. I'll be back shortly. Hi guys, we're out the oven. Lovely and smooth. Lovely fleck and flash of uh, that gold in there, which I really like. I love putting metallics in. Um, is this one again a lovely flashing that looks like a butterfly's wing doesn't it it's it weird and this one now it looks like it's got a bubble there but it's actually um, the mic has shifted and it makes it look like a bubble it's weird uh, so there's that one and of course my little beads which don't look like much really do they but um, I'm sure when they're buffed they'll look a bit better uh, so yeah I'll go and give these a quick buff and sand uh, to be fair I'm just going to do the edges and then I'll probably just um, lightly buff uh, because it's a really nice finish on them uh, I'm just hoping I can get a nice uh, shine on the clay um, I'll go and get that that done guys um, I've made a couple of other bits as well I'll show you when they're done uh, just with some scraps uh, and the piece that was left over they're actually in cooking um, so I'll go and get these um, polished up and we'll put some uh, findings on and the such see you in a min hi guys okay these have all been quickly buffed and I really haven't done much to them I used the um, you know my shiners and buffers uh, I just went over with the soft grit and then just went over with my Dremel uh, to be fair on this one I could probably just give it a little bit more of a sand and then buff it up I could just see a few little bumps on the surface but it still looks nice and here's that one and then this is the one I'm going to string up for you I'm loving this flash of gold through there it looks really nice and then there's a sneaky little band of it in the bottom so that looks cool uh, my little turquoise bead I made uh, I just drilled them and it exploded uh, so I've just quickly 
um, buffed the other bead up and that will have to do uh, I'll string this up and then I'll show you the other bits I've made uh, I've just got some simple waxed cotton cord and I'll just do my usual uh, little fastening technique where I pull the tails can you see I pull the tails through the loop hold the, the tails out of the way and then I twist the loop and pull it back through and it just gives you that little lock that stops it coming undone makes it look a bit more finished as well and if you do thread it through the other way it looks like that but I quite like it when it spreads a bit and of course I've just got this little bead to add this is one of the fav my favourite ways of um, finishing off um, a necklace just really simple isn't it um, so yeah just a little matching bead it's a bit big to be fair that one but it'll have to do for now I may make a couple more with the a few bits of scraps I've got left um, so there's the pendant um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these ones yet I was just going to bung a bale on them uh, but I just don't want to drill a hole in when I'm not sure if that's what I want to do uh, the backs are really nice and neat um, so I may I may just glue a bale on the back you know just one of the flat looped bales uh, we'll see I'll just put these in my dish until I know what I'm doing with them that would probably be quite nice um, wire wrapped uh, but again I don't know what I'm going to do with them uh, right so this was the bit it's not sanded by the way guys uh, but this was the bit that was um, the last piece that was decent and I just did my usual favourite um, Bit of water still on the back um, just square with one of my little uh, oh, I can't get the light to shine there we go uh, one of my little loops on the back nice and firm with a bit of um, liquid clay um, it just needs finishing guys just a bit of shining and buffing and that would be a, a really nice pendant um, I really like this um, turquoise with the gold and the tan colour it's just a, a nice bright thing for me isn't it and this plug of um, gold um, obviously because it's quite dense and not as fine as these it just gives it a nice contrast doesn't it and then with the scraps I made a couple of um, lentil beads again these aren't polished uh, I made them and then I just flattened them and cut them out with a cutter so I've got this shape the other side's bonkers look at that so I could make these into a two-sided pendant I suppose and this one I just did a circle one uh, again just lentil beads um, that I've and look at that on the back there's not a lot of gold showing in that but I wonder what it might look like when it's buffed uh, but I prefer that side and it doesn't look circular because that's off centre but it is I checked um, so there we go guys they're the bits I've made uh, from that block and I haven't got many scraps left um, just a few bits um, so there we go um, I'll probably buff these up and then you can see uh, in the photographs how they look uh, these are just a bit of fun I probably won't do much with them although that's quite cute uh, and I shall see you all in the next video uh, where hopefully um, I'll have got my kumigami out my head and we'll do something new and exciting uh, thanks for watching again 
See you all soon. Bye.